What a beautiful day we have here today. Hi everyone, welcome again to my channel. It's mid-April and the garden is so interesting right now. It's blooming, it's colorful, and just a joy to look at. I'm really excited to walk you through, show you everything that is blooming, give you updates on the recent project that I worked on, and tell you about what is coming up next. So let's take a look. As always, we'll be starting here in the vegetable garden and we'll start by taking a look at this beautiful flower bed. I mean, all the tulips are, out, are up now and really interesting mix of colors. And it's so nice to be able to come here in the vegetable garden and be welcomed by such a bright sight. So many beautiful colors coming up here and I'm really glad that I planted these bulbs here back in fall and they are really everything that they were promised to be. So they complement the vegetable garden here really, really well. Uh, here is my piece which is like exploding right now. I need to do a better job at uh, getting it to stick to the trellising, but I also planted them quite, quite closely together. The beets and the radish here are also doing great. We have already harvested a few radishes here. Over here, I have the, the corn radish. These are the corn radishes that I started from seed indoors. And down here, I have more beets that I put in earlier this, this year. This bed over here, the onions are slower than in that bed over there. I think it's because uh, um, this bed is more in the shade and during the winter it didn't get any light at all. I planted some uh, lettuce there in there, some fennel. I have a few going there and also on this side. I have a few fennel that I put there. And then I have my leeks, which is, uh, I need to harvest most of them really soon. This is spinach doing fantastic. I need to come here and harvest all of that. Here we have more onions and here is the garlic. You can see my struggle there with the birds that are eating on those greens. I recently purchased some bare roots rhubarbs that I put in here. So I have the rhubarb going there in the container. In this grow bag, I recently put in some potatoes so that's it with the vegetable garden. Everything is looking great. Before we move on to the rest of the garden, I'd like to show you the pop lasagna arrangements that I made back in fall and how they are doing right now. They are here on the roadside. So these are the three arrangements. I have two with the small maple trees inside and this one was the one without a tree inside. I just love the way they have been given since the beginning of the of the season these are the ones over here with the maple trees uh, i think the color blend is still very very beautiful you have the tulips that are coming up now and the daffodils dying back i need to come out here and also cut those that are done already the limelight hydrangeas are coming up here and this is the last arrangement this one has been really really fantastic so i've been really happy with how this turned out and then we have the roadside where i planted other bulbs so that's how the roadside is looking look at those so cute all right now we head back inside we're not going to see everything but you notice that i i used to have a container here that fell over uh, during the wind and it, it, it broke. So I got this red robin that I'm uh, thinking about uh, putting somewhere here in the front yard. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the beds here. So we, when the wind came, there was quite a, a lot of damage with the tulips. I had to remove some of the tulips here uh, because they were just scattered all over the place. And the ones that are remaining here now, the ones that are left are not yet blooming. However, I was surprised to see that my clematis that I planted last year that didn't give me a single bloom has just started growing. So I have all those buds there on the clematis and it's going to be exploding really soon. This is what they will look like. 
So I'm looking forward to seeing those blooms. Now I think we should take a look at the border and we should get started right here with the arrangement here in this concrete basket. This has been given a lot with all the violas and all the daffodils, the tulips. This has been such a beautiful addition to the garden and I just love it. The chestnut tree has leafed out. I'm looking at my chestnut tree and realizing that it has a lot of leaves now, but uh, I didn't see blooms on it yet this season. So I'm wondering if it's supposed to bloom in the coming weeks or if it's not going to bloom at all this year. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> the chestnut tree. This was the recent project that I worked on, planting these small, tiny lavender bushes, which are going to grow. By the end of the season, they're going to grow into larger pieces, and this place will look fantastic. Now, taking a closer look at the border, I've been working on this border, you know, frequently, repeatedly, removing things there, adding things there. Right now, what we have uh, the helleboros that I added, they came straight out of this basket here, two of them. I put them here from the basket. That one came from another container here in the front yard. And then we have the dusty millers. I planted my poppy seedlings from the winter sowing here as well recently. Added those in. I have been adding a few other things. I've made a few posts on Instagram about the things that I've been adding here. So here I have the Edelweiss, which uh, I struggled to grow from seed. But I got this one from the garden center and I look forward to seeing those blooms. So the tulips here in the border are officially coming up now. There are many that are yet to open up, but those that have opened up are making a statement here in the border and they're looking glorious. So you notice that the peony has added a few centimeters since last time we filmed it and that I have uh, added a few more other things, the rubecchia here, echinacea actually. Back there is a recently added uh, spirea that is growing with the white blooms back there. And I transferred a few things from the backyard uh, flower border that I had last season. The gay fed is already coming up. A lot to look forward to. I moved this sedum again, the red variety. Here is another variety of uh, costa coming up. Look at that. That is so beautiful. In the border, you also notice that I removed a few crocuses from this front row because I just felt like there was too much yellow going on. So I took a few out and put them in, in containers, just like right there, up there, and in various other places where there was a lack of, uh, of color. And what I have going on here right now are just the uh, violas, which are looking beautiful as well. And the border itself is slowly filling up. Many things growing, something growing every single day. I added in these um, primroses recently, just to have something there. I have the delphiniums here. This one is from the backyard, I brought it here. But I also purchased a new variety uh, last week or two weeks ago. And I have it here right now. The Pacific Hybrid Delphinium. Oh, here's another hosta coming up. Interesting. And look at those tulips again. Oh my goodness. Isn't that just beautiful? The rose is coming back here. It also took a rear beating from the wind that we had last week. So the big flower, pink Annabelle hydrangea over there. It's coming back nicely. So that is the border as of the month of April. Isn't that beautiful? All right, now we're going to be looking at the containers over here. Notice the leaf on the Japanese maple tree, the red umbrella. 
slowly beginning to form. I decided to bring a few things here because uh, the container seemed a bit lonely. So I added in some crocuses, some cora bells, hikaras, some ornaments. <laughs> and we have a little pot, a small pot of tulips that is coming up there. So that is looking good. Now over here, I have the tulips that have come up here really, really nicely. Look at those colors looking fantastic so I've been having trouble here because as you can see I have four containers and only two are performing as uh, as they should the other two uh, well this one is going to definitely perform those are the ice cream tulips that are supposed to bloom in this container and over here I just uh, some tulips, they're a bit similar to these, not quite the same, but they should be up by now. And here they are, not doing much. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if they got a shock during their development uh, and just stopped growing because uh, this is not looking good. I don't know that anything else will happen to these tulips. Maybe they'll just stay like this. They're still firm and they just won't grow. They were treated the same exact way as the other tulips that are here in these containers. Uh, but they just won't grow. So that's the situation right there. Now, before we go and uh, take a look at the hydrangea border that you see here already, I mean, we can just check it. <laughs> So the hydrangea border, uh, the hydrangeas are coming back really beautifully. On this side, we have the other bear hydrangeas that are leafing out right now, filling in slowly. I have a row of alliums back there that are also, I think they'll bloom, they're doing great. And here in front are those mini allium bulbs. Here, however, I did transplant, as you might remember, I did transplant some uh, tulips here and the tulips didn't do well at all. I think uh, transplanting them was not a good idea. And, uh, and yeah, so no tulip show here or just a mediocre tulip show on this border this year. Uh, we'll learn from this and uh, do better next season. The daffodils, however, that I transplanted here in this border performed fantastically. They did great. They are slowly dying back now, but they have had their time and they've given so much. So the daffodils were great here and I think I'll do the same next year. So on this side of the border, we have the limelight hydrangeas, which are also slowly leafing out, but not as fast as the Annabelle hydrangeas on the other side over there. Before we go to the backyard, I wanted to show you the um, dahlias that I've uh, set for pre-sprouting, but that have not yet put on any leaves. So I moved them here because this is the sunniest part of the garden. This whole front yard sitting area is where we have the most sun. So I'm thinking if they're here, that might help uh, speed up the process a little bit because it would be great to have a few leaves on the dahlias before I transplant them to their final positions. But they're still looking good. I don't think we have uh, to worry about any roots. This is, these are roots that are growing there. And do we have an eye somewhere? Yep. There is an eye slowly forming here. So the dahlias are, are not rotten. <laughs> so now to the containers here next to the house, to the wall. You'd notice that they're not looking quite the same as they did uh, in the last garden tour. And that is because I removed the tulips that were in here in this big container and brought in the boxwoods. So these two boxwoods, uh, I have one here and one over there. Uh, I got them from, you know, when I was working on this project over here, I had two boxwoods. 
uh, right here that I dug up and just uh, planted them in those containers and the reason why I did that is because after the wind after the wind the tulips didn't look good at all they were scattered everywhere falling over and I just thought it's better to remove them and put something in to freshen up the whole area rather than holding on to the to tulips that don't want to stay up at all so that is the new look I don't know if you can see this but the hibiscus is slowly leafing out you can see there are some little leaves beginning to form on that hibiscus topiary so that is what is going on there aren't those beautiful and now we're moving towards the back not much has changed here I haven't uh, started on any of the projects that I announced for this area yet the only thing that I've done so I newly added a fortitia here which is uh, is done blooming now and I also added a few uh, things from the backyard yes so I brought in my New England asters transplanted them here I added a, an echinacea right there I have a hosta growing here so now we're going to go straight to the other side where there is more action the only thing that you'd notice here is that we no longer have the polytunnel here so I used to have a polytunnel here and then the, the wind blew it away and so I decided to put it somewhere else now here what I like to call my semicircle garden I have done a few things here but uh, it's work in progress as of now work in progress as change as things come and go as I add and remove things is still work in progress and here we are in the backyard where we have a few things to acknowledge here the two trees that you see here these are primus eminem primus eminems they are now blooming I don't know if you can see the blooms they have like white blooms up there forming so those are blooming the Japanese maple tree the blood good this one is coming back really really nicely and I have to stick that because as you can see when it's windy it does need a, a little bit of support now that it's still so small so I need to, to stick that the mop head hydrangea row is uh, coming back as you can see leafing out making new leaves down there throughout the row that is what you see I'm yet to address this now to the main attraction here in the backyard so the cherry blossom is in bloom right now and what a beauty she is look at that dancing in the wind I mean this is like I don't know how many blooms are on that tree but it changes the game back here it's just so beautiful so I'm really happy that I did transplant this back in winter it's in a better position here uh, in this uh, space of the backyard it gets enough Sun and uh, it's just looking fantastic all right moving on so I have worked a bit more on this bed um, before the, the heavy the strong wind came I had planted most of the poppy seedlings here from my winter sowing and you can still see a few poppy seedlings going on there and also I did plant my salvia splendens or the red salvia uh, and what happened is that the next day the wind came and blew everything away so all my salvia seedlings just disappeared and all I have left of those now are these ones right here so those are the little tiny salvia seedlings that I grew indoors so the other things that I've added in this garden bed back here you notice my redwood which is looking beautiful I'm going to be removing some of those boxwoods here in this uh, boxwood hedge 
and planting them in containers and elsewhere. Uh, back there is another spirea that I put in recently and it has lots of buds so it's going to be blooming and I have a, a fern a fern that I recently added here I did put in a, a rubecchia recently but also some uh, helleboros and of course the bulbs that I planted in this bed are now popping up and blooming and that is looking beautiful so that is it for this garden bed here so now we move more to the back of the garden where i have now brought the polytunnel i decided to place it here because i know that this area is more uh, is more protected from the wind because of the the, the, the back wall of the garage however uh, the plants will receive less light here in the morning they will get the morning sun that is coming from that direction hitting there and then in the afternoon this is all they get so i don't know how it's going to work out we're going to have to wait and see so the polytunnel is right here now before we take a look inside the polytunnel i just wanted to update you on the recent activities that i uh, carried out back here so I recently started planting vegetable here in the backyard and I have already put in potatoes in this row right here. Here where it is still covered right now, I put in some carrot seeds. I have some onions going there and back there the little tiny green seedlings are the leeks that you will be seeing coming up. So that is where I have planted my leeks. And what we also get to see here is how beautiful all the bulbs have come up that I planted back in fall and how great the sedum is doing here. It's coming back, filling in really nicely. So the other things going on back here, I did, I decided to put my uh, zinnia seeds uh, in these containers. And as you can see, I have some zinnia seedlings going on already. A few varieties that I've put in there. So uh, yeah, I'm glad they're coming up. Over here, I also have, this is the morning glory flower that is coming up. And over there, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> So now is the afternoon and you can see how much sun we have coming in here where we have the raspberries and the blueberries and the blackberries and this is the dormant red variety of the raspberries I have a fig tree here and all the raspberries I have lost two raspberries and I think I'm losing them have this one over here which is not looking great all the other ones all the other ones are not looking too bad i have another one here which is not doing so great i don't know what is the cause of that i might have to replace that one as well and then and then i recently worked on my strawberry tour containers and I've planted my, my strawberries inside. Some of them are doing great because the, the day after I planted them we had a big uh, snowfall and so some of the plants were quite shocked. They got a shock and they didn't do so well. Just like this one right here. But there might be, it might come back so I just have to wait and see how that goes. These are the strawberries. Now, the polytunnel. The polytunnel is back here, and inside I have all the seedlings. All right, guys, so this video got really long, and I decided that it, may be, it, it might be best for me to show the seedlings in, this, in a separate video, which I'll be publishing shortly after uh, this one is released. So thank you so much for watching. Check out our next video to see how all the seedlings are doing and what we have already planted. 
Thanks for watching and see you in our next one. Bye-bye.